Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm Stephen Rogers. I'm Andrew Chavon. Hello, Internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hello, Metaverse. <laughs> I just found out this weekend that was about Facebook. Uh-huh. I thought there was another term for uh, VR. Okay. That people just started, and I was like, why is everyone changing it? And now I'm realizing it's uh, about Facebook. Well, that's Facebook's end game. They want to move everyone who is alive into uh, some kind of metaverse, which everyone will interact in virtual reality. And it'll never work, everybody. I yeah. Mean, 3D TVs, everyone thought that was going to replace regular TVs. That failed. VR headsets, everyone thought we were all going to use those. We didn't. I don't know why he thinks we're going to change now after all these failed attempts, but... I, I don't know. It's uh, it's real dumb. Uh, anyway. Hate, people hate change. It's going to take like 100 years for us to... Yeah, I've been wearing the same pants for like weeks. Uh, <laughs> Me too, yeah. <laughs> Underwear too. Uh, underwear. Uh, oh, I'm, under I'm, there. Remember uh, PlayStation Automobiles? He's like... He's asking for a room, mm -hmm. and the guy's like, I can't do anything to the manager. And, he, and Steve Martin says, please, I've been wearing the same underwear since Tuesday. <laughs> and the guy still doesn't care. He's like, yeah, it's just their policy. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry your underwear smells. That guy's the greatest character ever. Oh, man. Steve Martin does a great job of delivering angry uh, lines. He you wouldn't a, think he's a comedian. Yeah, but he has a good angry face. He does, when yeah, because it's sharp angles. Yeah, yeah. He looks like a PlayStation One character. <laughs> it's a lot of polygons. All right, everyone. Deep references here. Metaverse, yeah. PlayStation One. Yeah, our, uh, bo our boomer fans, are, meaning our parents, are confused. <laughs> uh, actually, speaking of which, uh, I had this idea over the. I'm becoming like you. I'm having ideas for the podcast while driving. Well, that's and, good. Yeah, I just haven't driven in a while. Uh, and uh, um, I haven't been driven. <laughs> I've been pretty lazy. I, I've been Keep driving going. you insane. Uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> up the wall, more like it. That's what my ways says when you're around. Go up the wall. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, I, I uh, heard a podcast that shouts out their Patreon subscribers, their new Patreon subscribers on, the, on their regular episode. And obviously, we have never done that. So uh, I was thinking we could plug the new Patreon subscribers, but we can't do that without uh, plugging the old. Okay. In with the new, in with the old. That's right. Uh, nothing's coming out. Uh, see a doctor. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, shout out to our wonderful supporting uh, cast of... Uh, of Patreon subscribers in order of appearance, uh, Jenny Marie, Matt Brooke, Kevin Ellis, Ryan D, Ronnie Van Winkle, uh, Helena, Elizabeth Ann McGork, John Chapel, Andy Chavone, Christine, Liv Johnson, uh, Jolene, AJB, Emily Lee, Patrick Seaman, Eric Aspera, Malls, Ollie, Deborah Chavone, Kara B, and Graham Carr. Graham Carr is our newest, everybody. Yes. So uh, we, uh, instead of, you know, this is like PBS. Instead of having commercials, we're going to read these names. So, yeah, that's a that's an ad that has your names in it. So you won't skip it. We're literally brought by viewers like you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> You're paying the rent at this studio, a.k.a. my kitchen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I uh, also, I met a, I was in uh, Hartford, uh, Connecticut, opening for Sam Marill this weekend. And... I um get I leave the club to go get me and uh, Sam some food in between shows, and the guy stops me and he goes, "Hey, uh, you had a great set. I didn't know you were gonna be here. I listened to the podcast." What? Yeah. My God, I just got goosebumps. I did too. Uh, and I sprinted back in uh, the green room. Well, and... he would known because you plugged it on the last episode. This but man I... is a liar, everyone. That's true. Uh, <laughs> or, or he skips the intros. Or he's not up to date. Oh yeah, he's maybe he skips. Uh, but uh, thank you. I didn't get his name because I was so thrown off. I ran and got stickers and gave them to him, and then he looked at him and went, "What's this?" But uh, I'm joking. <laughs> what show is this? He, he thought you were Mark Maron. Yeah, he beat me to it. I was going to say Norman. Oh, he's like, I loved when you had Obama on. Oh, 
<laughs> and I was like, I didn't know people called Regan Obama uh, or, no. or Joe List. Uh, well, we had Regan on twice, two terms. Two t- <laughs> we reelected him. <laughs> four more, four more hours. <laughs> but people are like, "Hey, can you have him back?" And we were like, "Yes, we can." Oh, well, we had hope. <laughs> Uh, but I I, uh, I was n- nervous. It was a long drive with uh, Marill, and uh, we were talking on the way up. His albums have been taken off Spotify okay, because of this lawsuit that Spotify has with comedians or comedy. I don't know exactly what this lawsuit is, but comedians are not getting paid well, the, per uh, play. They wanted, uh, the, the back story about this is they wanted to get paid for the performance and the writing because mm-hmm. comedians do both. Spotify said, screw you, we're taking them all off. Right. And they took off everybody's albums. Yeah. And it's not fair because they pay literally pennies on the the listen. Negative pennies. I don't even know what it is. It's not a lot. But SiriusXM pays a ton. And no one one listens to SiriusXM. No. Everyone listens to Spotify. Seriously. Seriously, XMs. (laughs) So so I I looked and all, like I tried to listen to Kyle Kinane one time I was driving. I'm like, oh, that's weird that I can't find his albums. Everybody's, and we were talking about Regan's albums are gone. Everybody's albums are gone just because of this one loss. So anyways, uh, really fun uh, weekend with uh, Sam Marill. We, uh, we, Sam's awesome. He, like most clubs, they give you a hotel and everything, and, you know, it's uh, not great, and uh, you get real sad. Sam is like, I'm looking out for my mental health, books his own hotel, and booked it for me as well. Man, he's so nice. He's the nicest guy ever. I mean, Regan does that, but I, I didn't know that... Uh, club headliners could do that as well. The one time I opened for him in 2016, he was like, uh, how much are gas and tolls? I was like, I don't know. He's like, would 200 do it? Oh I'm my like, God. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, we drove an hour. <laughs> no tolls. <laughs> I like went, I, I went five hours out of my way to not pay tolls. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So funny. He's so generous. He's really nice, yeah. Like, I see it a lot in headliners more and more, but I guess at a club headliner, I, I've never really seen it at, to this level because, like, club headliners, it's like it's not like you're making tons of money. But I think Sam is. Probably, yeah. He, he He's, like, about to break to the next level. I mean, he sold out to Beacon twice and yeah. had another show. He's killing it. He's, yeah. And his new hour is so good. Oh, awesome. But uh, anyways, we uh, so I drive us up. We we stay at this hotel. It's got valet, which was the most inconvenient valet I've ever experienced ever. And out of the two valets you ever had in your life, <laughs> that, the one that you talked about with Rory Rose Garden. <laughs> oh yeah, that was also inconvenient. Man, they're both. They were all. <laughs> I don't think you're just used to valets. I think that's the problem. Well, peaks and valets, but uh, <laughs> we made that joke before. <laughs> Did we really? Of course. <laughs> No mountain high enough, no valet low. Oh, yeah, that sounds right. But, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> there's already so many puns we can make. Uh, man, that pun is loaded. But, uh, <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Regis- uh, register that pun. <laughs> that pun. The pun needs to be confiscated. Pun in the oven. Uh, oh, yeah, that we'll come back to that later because of the diner hang. Okay. But, um, uh, so we're waiting, uh, Sam and I are waiting for the car to get, uh, picked up by the valet. First time I go get the car, they give me the wrong key and I'm walking <laughs> towards my car. Cause it's, it's like, there's not a lot to do when you're a valet. It has to be the right key. I mean, that's literally the only thing. They give me the wrong key, but it's the same fob. It's the same type of car. So I didn't even, I'm like, well, they're never going to give me the wrong key. So I didn't look at it. Right. And then, and then they chased me down, and they were like, "You you took the wrong key." I'm like, "Oh, I took the key you gave me." Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, they really, really projected on you. Yeah. Well, you took the wrong key, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> this guy doubled down. He has the same mo for everything he does wrong. Because here is the craziest thing I've ever seen a valet do. So okay. it's a one way dr- uh, road. Yes. And uh, it's uh, from left to right. So. Sam and I are. Uh, All right. I, it does come into I think play. You just confused me by being more specific. Yeah, I guess so. All right. But I, I, it does come into play. So, uh, Sam and I are standing there waiting to 
head to our last two shows. We're going to go home from the show. So we got all our bags. And uh, this is Saturday night. This is Saturday night. Uh, is all right for fighting. And we're waiting. I really hope you didn't have a fever. <laughs> and these times. <laughs> Canyon Rock. Um, so all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, oh, you did meatloaf. I was yeah. doing Saturday night fever. Oh, okay. You were doing the obscure meatloaf deep cut from Bad of the Hell. But that's all that you guys have been. You and I Joe know. have been singing it nonstop. I know. It's such I, a good song. <laughs> so good. No one likes it. Uh, anyways, so I give the uh, the ticket to the guy. The guy goes, uh, I'll go get your car. And uh, comes flying down the wrong way. Like a Bad of the Hell. <laughs> Like a bat out of hell, valley from bar, bar, bar. <laughs> So he comes flying down the road from the opposite, going the wrong way down the one way street. So he's coming up from the right and he looks, he rolls down the window and looks out the window and goes, I'm going to do a U turn. And we're <laughs> like, okay. And he whips the car as two people are crossing the street. Oh, God. And almost hits both of them. Like, inches away from them slams on the brake and they're both old uh like an old couple they're like oh my god what are you doing <laughs> i'm gonna get your license plate <laughs> and registration and sue Sounds you. like a, cur a curb episode there's been two curbs that the license plate is uh in play but uh so he almost hits well, both of them also curbs on that road i hope <laughs> and valets oh god uh <laughs> i just wanted to say it again he and he almost hits both of them what just happened? Nothing. What just happened? I'm just acting so shocked in your story. Oh, okay. Uh, you're freaking me out. <laughs> okay, everything's on. He <laughs> he almost he almost hits both of them. Slams on the brake. They start screaming, and then they both look at us and start talking to us like, "What was he doing? What? That's crazy, right?" And Sam and I are just standing there like, "This is insane." So you and didn't relate to them. You didn't go, "Yeah, that was pretty nuts." I didn't, we wanted nothing to do with the the accident that almost happened, <laughs> and probably happened in their, all their pants. But uh, all right, well, oops, I crap my pants. <laughs> guy does the U turn. It depends, everybody. <laughs> depends if they. All right, I should have set that up better. Uh, set set his pants. Uh, that didn't work either. That didn't make sense. Nope. Okay. Continue. I give both those jokes a two. Um, Number two. Keep, keep going. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to. <laughs> I got diarrhea of the mouth. Uh, so he stops in front of us, gets out, and he goes, look, I, don't know, I know I almost hit them, but they shouldn't be walking across the street when there's cars coming. We were like, wait a minute. Your sentence starts with, I know I almost hit them, mm -hmm. and then there's a but? Also, he's going the wrong way. He was going the wrong way down the one way. You're only supposed to look one to the left Yeah, when, if it's a one way. This could only have gone one way, but... He gets, <laughs> so he almost, <laughs> he almost hits both of them. They were like this, he almost launches this old religious couple, you know, so nunchucks and. Okay. And, were they, were they wearing nun outfits? No, but I like the idea of nunchuck. Okay. I, I thought nunchucks was, and flamethrowers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need to take to the story. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> what is going on? And he gives us the key, and and uh, we we go to the show, and we just watched him almost kill two people, and then blame them. Okay, this is <laughs> uh, exciting time. So the show went well. Yeah, the show went well. I got nothing to contribute here because I wasn't there. And... You're never there for any of the stories I, I tell. <laughs> I, my theory on valet, so like you know, when the global pandemic happened, I, I like what are, what are they doing? No one's going anywhere. No one, you know, they had the most stressful jobs of the world. They have to park and and reverse and then make sure no one's car touches each other. And you know, I'd be the most nervous guy in the world because you got a line of people. They're like, "Give me my car," and you have to run and like, yeah. you know, sometimes there's a stick shift or something. Yeah. I feel for these people. So when the thing reopened, I'm sure no one wanted to do this job except for this psycho who, <laughs> like, you know, wants to kill people. <laughs> That's my theory on that whole thing. Yeah, they, uh, 
I imagine they probably have to constantly sanitize too because they're touching everybody's steering wheel. I don't. I don't think they would at all. But yeah, that's good. I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, they're but, too busy. Yeah, I, I guess. But uh, yeah, so that was uh, the craziest part of Hartford. And then the hotel was so nice, but everyone in the hotel knew Sam. Like they were in, they were staying at the hotel to go see him. Oh no way! So what? there was. Yeah, like travel from all over the country. Well, I don't know, but there were some New Yorkers that drove up, but uh, a lot of people were in the hotel going, "We're seeing you tomorrow." Oh, nice. He's like, "Oh, great!" And then we went to try to do our key in the elevator, and it didn't work, so we just had to walk past all of them again. It looked (laughs) like we were trying to (laughs) be recognized twice. Remember us? And uh, we were in our hotel. He and I are sharing a wall, and uh, all of a sudden, I hear commotion in the hallway, and then I hear a huge pop like a really loud pop and i'm like oh my god that was a gunshot that okay. was totally a gunshot and then uh i tech i'm talking to him later and he's like yeah did you hear that i'm like yeah i heard that but the- obviously there was no screams or anything so it had to have been something else then we see a bunch of people with balloons oh walk by and we felt pretty dumb oh man well hartford i don't know is that safe no no nope. <laughs> all right well you had reason to be scared everybody oh yeah all right, so let's let's. I mean, my Hartford race. Hartford, <laughs> my Hartford was pounding out of my chest. So the uh, the uh, thing I wanted to talk about Tuesdays with stories talked about us or talked about me. <laughs> and, uh, oh, about time I get a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've been hanging out with Joe List a lot, and I just want to say it's been so much fun because what they call you, Big Sack Chavon? Or? <laughs> Big Sack. <laughs> he just calls me Chavon, and then Mark gets pissed. But why? He's like. Uh, he felt jealous. Oh, did he? Yeah. Well, I, that I mean, we're so you guys got to hang out, you and Mark now. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be on the consolation crew. All right, sounds good. So, uh, I want to talk about. So, we met up at the diner by my place. We ate. It was fun. We talked stories, and then we went walking around the neighborhood. And this is how much fun it is to hang out with all of us. Oh, we're not, Cabe, <laughs> but. This is how much fun it is. It's so clear that you two don't like each other. People keep saying that. I like him. <laughs> you just said it's so fun hanging out with all of us. <laughs> and Renan came. <laughs> well, the three of us are, are like pun people. Renan sets us up. Oh, his, that's true. With I his, know what you're with, saying. With, he talks all the time and we make fun of him. But So we walk around and uh, we find out about the Bob Saget thing. How he, he hit his head. He hit his head. and Brain, went to, brain bleed. Yeah. He hit the head, went to bed. Old man snoring. But... The, we walk around and uh, we're, we're talking about it. We're like, oh my God, that's horrible. And Renan says, yeah, that happened to my grandmother. She tripped on a pooper scooper, hit her head. <laughs> oh man, and that then, was the best. And then died. And we're, and then you say, you think you started off. I said, well, shit happens. And then he, and Joe says, well, that stinks. <laughs> and it gets to me and, and you do, you already done the poop stuff. So then I, I, I say, uh, wow, what a scoop. <laughs> It was like boom, bam, bam. Oh, man. Yours was my favorite. <laughs> yours was my favorite. Cause, cause you guys, so I, I, had to do, I had to work with the scooper because you guys already <laughs> did the poop stuff. Yeah. So, so then I uh, turned it in the sand is worth doing the bush. <laughs> <laughs> and then Rodan just has to go, yeah, that's my, that's <laughs> my, yeah, my grandma's dead. <laughs> my grandma's dead. <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, yeah! Oh my God! So much fun! Um, but we had so many puns at the the diner table too. And Ronan literally said, "I got to get a, a pun out by the end of the this hang." And, and, and I he, go, "There's puns in the oven." <laughs> oh, that's right. And he did it, by the way. No, he didn't. Because <laughs> we were like, like Muhammad Ali punning him in yeah, the face. I, he he couldn't get one in before pun down. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, so uh, um, and then we we went to Joe. Oh, what they say about you on Tuesdays? I haven't heard it yet. Well, he kept bringing me up. Well, first he talked about his version of Louis' story where I was late, and then uh, <laughs> he made fun of me for that. And I'm like, oh, that was cool. I got shouted out, and he kept bringing me up to Mark until Mark goes, "Hey, enough of this guy." <laughs> That's great. And I was listening like. Yeah, stop bringing me up. Good God. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Good Lord. Um, What was the other story we had with him? Um, 
Oh yeah, so he you were gone. So I hung with him all weekend. Yeah, so mad. He did the freaking Schindler's List viewing party without me. Yeah, were you in that and movie? And I haven't seen it. It was great. We even had a lot of good jokes too, uh, <laughs> which is inappropriate. But that's what happens. It was Renan, me, Sarah, Joe, um, Isabel Hagen came over, and then um, like we had some good ones. Uh, Renan said. Um, could you imagine like finding out you weren't on the list? You know, you're yeah. like, oh, I thought I was his friend. <laughs> you know, I'm not on that list because he had to type it all for memory. Schindler. Yeah. So he, we were like, he's bound to leave out people. Yeah. And then you know, Renan said, uh, Patterson's on it. He's not even Jewish. <laughs> the guy who finds out he's not on the list. <laughs> That's funny. And then I and then there's a scene at the beginning where, um, like the 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 Nazis are like taunting a Jewish guy. And yeah. Like playing with his curls. And mm-hmm. I go, imagine if this guy was bullied in high school and he's like, graduates, he's like, well, at least that's over. <laughs> and he gets to, oh. he, he's Jewish. and <laughs> I get it now. Yeah, but inappropriate. <laughs> but, but it's true. You know, yeah. you, you, when you graduate high school, you're like, oh, at least the bullying's over. And then oh, the Nazis no. take yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> Bully you in the street. <laughs> you're like, I thought that was my rock bottom was, was, was freshman year. <laughs> <laughs> The bullying never ends, everybody. But all right, so that was fun. And then, uh, oh, so then we were making plans to hang out again. And and Joe's like, uh, I don't know if we hang out with Steve without Steve again, he's gonna kill himself. And I'm like, all right, yeah. So uh, I'm his neighbor. I'm I hang out with him all the time. I know, but he thinks if me and him hang out without you, you're gonna you know gonna be depressed or something. No, I'm fine with it. Uh, it's uh, um. The only thing that I, I wanted to see the movie and I didn't get to watch it. So. Well, you were away. Yeah, but he was. It was. He told me we were gonna have a. He pitched it to me, and then he had it without me. It would have been a lot of fun if you were there. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted. I haven't seen the movie yet. That's all. That's the only thing. It's that a really good me. movie. Uh, uh, the only thing I didn't like is that Ray Fines, his name's Rafe. Mm-hmm. Spelled, oh, Ra- yeah. spelled Ralph, yeah, which is also confusing because I was like, oh, I thought Ralph is Fanes is in this, and he's like, no, it's Ray Fanes, and I'm like, okay, Ralph Fanes is somebody else. He just looks like <laughs> Ray Bands, Ray Bands. So then, um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, the only thing I didn't like is how R- Ray Fines and and uh, Neeson, what's his name? Liam Neeson. They look exactly the same. Oh, to me, I don't yeah, know. sure, don't they? But I, like, I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> all right. Well, you know the actors. I know the actors, but I haven't seen them on this on screen together. Well, it's a good movie. I was like, because you guys keep hanging out without me. I was like but... tearing up at you know. I did that thing where I'm like, I was tearing up too. I was tearing up. You were tearing up for different <laughs> reasons. But I was like doing a thing where I'm tearing up and pretending to scratch my my face to hide. My I've t- done that a million times. That's my, <laughs> That's my go-to. That's my go-to. I constantly make it look like I'm itchy. Yeah, me too. Oh, and when I'm at a funeral, it looks like I had allergic reaction. Yeah, me too. I gotta be like, oh, anyone have an antihistamine <laughs> and a hanky and a hanky <laughs> and, and visine? <laughs> <Some. laughs> uh, so, um, anyway, it's been cool to hang out with him. It's uh, th- the three of us together, like a super group. It's really fun. It's been a good time, uh, and I think it's just gonna keep happening. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. It's uh. It's the first guy, uh, you know, you, well, one of your friends that you, aside for Brian Regan, that I've been getting along with. You know, you always try to set me up with one of your friends. I know. I, <laughs> and, and it never works out. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you, this, is the, this is the first match. Who's the common denominator, though? I know, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the people I'm closer, the closest with are Joe, out of the people I've sent, sent you to. Sent me to. <laughs> It's like a <laughs> like a gift basket. Uh, are Regan and Joe? So at least you get along with them. Yeah, that's true. And there's and since they're the closest to you, and I'm the closest to you. Yeah, it's, it's like you know the it bonds. Works, it works out. It works out. Yeah, I think because because you pick them or you they gravitate to you for a reason. Yeah, and then the same reason that we gravitate to each other. Yeah. So we have like you know like um, elements you know like certain. Yeah. Like the noble gases can't bond or something. <laughs> right. Because they're like stuck up. They're noble. But then like other I, ga- <laughs> elements bond. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I got to tell you, I thought uh, I thought we were close friends, but then you brought up the periodic table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
my buddy. Sorry to Niels bore you. <laughs> good, good, good what job. a boron. <laughs> this would be more electronifying. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you really lost the magnetism. Uh, I don't know if that worked. That worked. Magnesium. Oh, that's, that's something. Uh, Helium Comedy Club. <laughs> Helium Network. We're on the Helium Network. Element number two, everybody. <laughs> we're not on the Hydrogen Network. Oh, One day we'll be on the Hydrogen Network, but right now we're on the Helium. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm cracking. Oh, I'm cracking. I'm on Helium. Breathe uh, in. God. Yeah. I'm running out of uh, oxygen. Oh. I, I couldn't think of anything. All right, that's an element. Um, so, uh, oh, I got to fill you in on my my weekend, the uh, lower class weekend. You're on the high shelf weekend. I had like the bottom shelf weekend. Yeah, yeah, you had uh, <laughs> you had the shelf that people put their uh, wet snowshoes on. <laughs> I was uh, no, I was lower than that. I'm the mat. They drew, drew, rub their wipe their boots on before they put it on the shelf to try. <laughs> try <laughs> was that. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> well, you were at one of my favorite clubs, Church of Satire. Yeah, yeah. And uh they kept bringing you up. They're like, "Oh, Steve's great. We had uh Peter Wong, he recommended. Next week we have Ariel Elias. He he was a Steve recommendation." And then I go, yeah, I do a podcast. Uh the podcast Steve Panic Attacking and they're like, "Oh yeah, him and Ariel do one." And I'm like, no, me and Steve. And the guy just like looked down. He didn't even care. Like, I've recommended you. He was a, he acted like I never knew who he was. Uh, he well, know you know, was. maybe it's just the bonds. I don't, I don't, I'm not bonded with that guy. Maybe no. the, the, the gases. He doesn't have enough electrons for my <laughs> electrons. That's the problem. Oh my god, it turned off! Ah! No. Cardful! My nightmare! <laughs> Oh my god, I hope it picked up that stuff. If not, I'll get it on there. Yeah, you got it on there. Oh man, now it's gonna take even more to edit because I gotta scramble all this stuff. All right, hold on. Hold on, everyone. Oh my god, it's so annoying. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, shoot. Uh, we, uh, memory card full. <laughs> And then we went back to the delete things, and the last thing we recorded, the <laughs> first thing we selected to delete was when we both complained that the memory card was full. It happened before a year ago. Yeah. It's the anniversary of the card being full. <laughs> uh, we were talking about uh, the uh, dramatic change in weekends here, uh, but you did do my favorite, one of my favorite clubs, uh, Church of Satire uh, in yeah. Hanover, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's right. Oh, right. Now I remember what we were talking about. Yeah. And uh, I have uh, recommended you in the past, as well as uh, Ariel Elias. Yeah. And uh, Peter Wong opened for me there, as, and they used him as a headliner. Yeah, they really liked you. They kept bringing you up. <laughs> They're like, Steven Rogers is great. You know him? I'm like, yeah, I do a podcast with him. They're like, oh, Ariel Elias has a podcast with him? I'm like, no, no, no. And then they just, looked, they just walked away. <laughs> but... But it's a very cool club. It's like, you know, I thought it was a former church, but they just, I guess, found church pews at an auction or something. And they, yeah. It, it, it fits like maybe 40 people or 50 people. I think something. 50, yeah. So uh, first night there, uh, the um, it's packed with drunk people because it's right. BYOB at the club. Yes. And it's one of those things where uh, – I, uh, I do crowd work. I'm getting like weird reactions. I'm like, hey, are you guys dating? And they're like, well, we're on our first date. Everyone laughs. I'm like, okay, well, how'd you meet? We met on Tinder. Huge laugh. I'm like, I don't know why that's funny. <laughs> Find out it's a birthday party. Uh, All 50 people know each other. They know that those people have been married for nine years. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, give so me something. So annoying. Give me real answers to work with. I could have made fun about how they were married. Instead, I got like joke things and I look like an idiot. I hate whenever the whole audience knows each other. Well, anyone that tries to be the funny people are the worst people. Yeah, and they try to do that too. <coughs> then they try to weir yell out weird things. Uh, what'd they yell out? <coughs> Oh, that's weird. They yelled that out. Yeah, they were coughing. 
I'm like talking. One guy's like, you want some of my beer? Oh, uh, and God. I'm like, no, it looks like you have the new variant. <laughs> That's great. The new variant start with you. That's great. Yeah, it was literally like a slug fest. <laughs> I think if, if I can get that tape, I'm going to post that clip. Yeah, that's I'm a great that's make a great fun clip. of that guy. But literally yelling out. Literally, I'm talking about I'm having a, a dog, and they're like, porn. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, all right, this guy's a pedophile. I don't know. I'm like, I have nothing to work with. Right, right. But they're loving when I make uh, talk back to them, which is encouraging them to talk back more. Yeah, they it's an endless cycle. And you're not even the headliner on it, so the headliner probably had to deal with it. Yeah, I know. I really... I tried to calm them down, but I'm like, this is unstoppable. And uh, literally, Church of Satire has like eight staff members. Yeah. Uh, but they're all, like, like, go backstage. I'm like sweating. They're they're all like eating pizza. Yeah, know? there's they're always <laughs> ordering pizza. Yeah. Every I mean, time there, there's a pizza in the bag. It's pretty awesome. And it's great. Well, they're eating. I mean, I'm like, oh, I could have used some help out there. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, want some of our beer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So then I'm, I'm, I'm going down with Ray Goots and uh, he's uh, like. How long have you guys been dating? Yeah, we've been too <laughs> met long. On Tinder. Too long. Yeah, I met on Tinder. <laughs> but he got this room. I guess like they used to put people up in a hotel. They had a condo. Yeah, but now they're like, oh, you can sleep in the office. We're like, what? Some comics have done it. Oh, God, I have. Better. I have not done. Did it. Peter Wong do it? Uh, no. I think they got their own place. Oh, thank God. That was, the office looks just like a nightmare. And those guys were hanging out all night, eating pizza. And yeah, like, how, how could you go to bed? You couldn't. Yeah. Oh, man. And your pillow is the box. Yeah. So, uh, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the blanket is just sauce <laughs> and cheese. So, this isn't good. <laughs> I guess this is kind of warm. Well, it's getting cold. Got to go in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Heated blanket. <laughs> so, uh, so instead he got this room at a golf course nearby. It's Hanover. What? Pen- I'd hold eight. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's just under a flag. Look for the flag. Oh man, sleep on the grass. Yeah, you guys are in the woodmill. So this is like an old school uh, hotel where uh, he's like freak. Uh, Ray's freaking out. He's like. We, I told him we'd check in at 6, but now uh, we got to check in at the club because it's 7.30, you know, it's been traffic. And I'm like, yeah, well, who cares, man? It's a big deal. It should... And uh, he keeps calling the hotel and telling, giving them updates, and they're like, all right, what you got to do? You're going to get co- come in after the show. It's going to be about 11. And, he get, and he's like, handicap spot, third floor, check the mailbox. He's saying all these things, and, and Ray keeps pointing at me. I'm driving. I'm like... I, Why is he pointing at you? Because he wants me to take it down. What? Take down these, like, clues. He's got all <laughs> these clues. <laughs> he's, got, he's got both hands. I know. I, don't, I have he the wheel. He can put you on speaker. So I'm like... I'm them on speaker. So I open the, the note app where you can talk to it. I'm like, handicap spot, third floor, mailbox, blah, blah. And, uh, and then I like put it, close it and we get to the show. We finish the show. I'm like looking at my jokes and I'm like handicap spot. I forgot what this was. I, and I almost deleted it. I'm like, this is weird. And my, my phone must've glitched. So then after the show, uh, we, uh, he's like, all right, let's go to the hotel. And we get there and it's literally like a golf course country club mm-hmm. that's, um, closed. <laughs> So I'm like, he's like, okay, so uh, read me the notes. I'm like, notes? <laughs> I completely forgot what he's talking about. And I'm like, handicap spot, mailbox, third floor. <laughs> so we go uh, we go by the handicap spot in the parking lot, and there's a staircase. So we go up to the third floor and the staircase that's outside. And there's a mailbox. Well, no, then we open no. the door. And there's just a hallway with, with rooms. No mailbox. We have to... <laughs> We walk down the other stairs because I guess there's stairs outside that lead to stairs inside if you go through the hallway with all the rooms. Okay. And I'm down there and there's like a restaurant and Ray's like freaking out. He's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, well, it has them. They like work here. We can't be the only people that ever had a late checkout in the history of this hotel because it looks old. And we walk in the back and I'm not exaggerating. There's a man mopping with his shirt off. If you see that in the middle of the At night, the end of his mop, is it a shirt? <laughs> yeah, he must, yeah, he must be using it. He must be using his shirt to, to mop the floor. He's wringing it out. When you see a man without a shirt on in the middle of the night, 
It, it's At, the most, anything, fright, most yeah. frightening thing you can see. I freeze. I'm like, <laughs> what is happening here? You're like a deer. Yes. I literally like li- was like a show, deer. I'm like, I'm going to be freeze. murdered by this shirtless mop man. Show me you coming around the corner, what what you did. I'm like expecting to see like a check-in box, and I see him, I go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like. And I look to my right, and there's like a bar right. for the restaurant or whatever. He's mopping. Yeah. And uh, there's a woman sitting there, like he, like 18-year-old woman. And, I, and we make eye contact. And she looks embarrassed. I don't know what's going on. And she goes, can I help you? And I go. Yeah, hotel. And she's like, she she says this. Well, did you check the mailbox? <laughs> go, oh man, oh, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> and she goes, follow me. She's all annoyed. And literally, the mailbox is like by the front door. It's one of those th- th- like black metal things. Where oh just... yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, it's like it's like lo- open where you I, you put mail in it's like a like, mailbox. Not not really. It's it's more like uh like it doesn't close. It's open. Okay. Like you could so you, anyone could grab the key. Yeah, there's two envelopes sticking out of this metal thing. It's more like with like uh when you. It might you might have it in your house when you get mail. You're like, oh, I'll put this here. Oh, this is for my wife sure. or something. Oh, gotcha. It's yeah, like yeah, openly yeah. displayed mail. It's not a mailbox. It's I like a it, display of mail. I know what you're talking about. People, I could see why people call it a mailbox. But you're talking about when you're in your home and yes. you're like, all right, this isn't my mail. It's her mail. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's like a thing. mail thing. Yeah, mail holder. I, I wouldn't call it a mailbox. No. Mail holder. I would say metal thing next to the door. I wouldn't say mailbox. I'm looking for like a UPS or <laughs> United States Postal Service blue thing with right. the eagle on it. Right. <laughs> like what the hell? You're looking for the flag. Yeah. So then there's two. Uh, not. Oh I, my. I was thinking about it too. Oh my. <laughs> there's two. Uh, Envelope sticking out of there, or there's one envelope, and she's like, Ray, and he's like, Yeah, two metal keys. Wow. Metal, Old school. Metal key. Never seen that before. We get in. You guys are holding it in front of the lock, thinking it will uh, turn green. Yeah. Right. Like a card. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're swiping the yeah. key yeah. <laughs> in the doorway. It's not working. Um, And I'm telling Ray, uh, he's like, oh, I'm hungry. Because he didn't know, then no one told him there was food. <laughs> Everyone ate the pizza during I, his I like, set. I li- literally ate the pizza during his set. I didn't even think about him. He also told me to take a photo of him. I completely forgot I was eating all the pizza. <laughs> and uh, we um, great feature. Yeah. Well, also the host was. Uh, I don't know what what's what, with my face, but people tell me like super personal stories. So the host is telling me how she moved to Australia for a guy, and six months later he. he he told her there was another woman. Oh, my God. And she's like, why don't you tell me this before I move? She had to get a visa and all Whoa. this stuff. And he said, well, I thought you liked Australia. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, oh, my God. Wow. Tindler swindler. And I'm just stuffing pizza in my face. Like, that sounds horrible. <laughs> Burping. <laughs> Can you pass the marinara? Yeah. Smoke the shrimp on the Barbie. <laughs> 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 that's a lovely accent new jersey <laughs> so uh that's good uh dumb dumber yep. um so i'm like i'm like hey man i'm really tired i drove all the way here we did this show i ate all this pizza and, he, and uh, i drive him to like the gas station he gets food and he's like i'll pick up some beer we'll party i'm like i'm pretty tired <laughs> so we get back and uh literally uh he hands me a beer i put it next to the nightstand i don't even <laughs> i don't even open it I don't even open it. I just close my eyes, really go to sleep. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but I had a great sleep, and we get up, and... Uh... Oh, this is what I wanted to tell. Well, there's two th- stories, but the first one is we go to this diner that's that's closed at 1. Mm-hmm. They're only open from, like, 6 in the morning to 1. You know, that's a good sign for breakfast. Or, yeah. You know. So we go there, and uh, the lady, like... Um, Brings us the food, and she's like, do you need anything else? Because I'm about to take my breakfast. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I need more coffee. And she brings over she brings over the thing, fills my coffee cup. And then she says, well, enjoy your breakfast. And I go, you too. 
You know, normally you say that to a waitress and it's wrong. Yeah. But this was right. Because yeah. she was going to enjoy her breakfast. That was right. Right. So I, I go to Ray. I'm like, isn't that crazy? I, I, I said that by accident, but it's true. And he goes, huh? <laughs> and I freak, start freaking out at him. I'm like, nothing. This, this is the first time in the world where this actually lines up. It makes sense. And he's like, oh, well, okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> then you give me the same reaction. I I thought it was interesting. <laughs> oh, whatever. Whatever, everybody. That was mind blowing to me. You know, because people are like, enjoy your food. You too. Oops, I should have said thanks. Yeah. Now I could say you too. And she's like, yeah, because I'm eating. <laughs> what, what did she say back? She doesn't care either. <laughs> no one <laughs> no cared. one's cared. No one's cared. <laughs> now you're just on this quest to find someone that cares. <laughs> yeah. Right in, everyone. If you care and think that's mildly interesting, give me a reaction. Oh, Emoji. If, we, if we're if uh, we going for mild, yeah, I think it's mildly interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Noble gases. <laughs> Blowing gas up my ass. Nobly. Gas giant. Gas giant. Uh, 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 smoking? Smoking? <laughs> Uh, probably is that, is that my breath? I think that's <laughs> I think that's story going down in flames. I think it is. That story stinks. <laughs> so then, um, so Hanover, <laughs> PA is next to. It's like a fifteen minute drive to Gettysburg, PA. Yeah, big history buff. You know. Yeah, the audience probably knows. That story's gonna live in infamy. Four score and seven episodes ago, I talked about I liked history. Gettysburg. So. Uh, I'm like, Friday night, I'm all tired. I'm eating pizza, and I'm like, you guys ever... I'm talking to the staff, the 12 people that work there. For some reason, we're all in the back, and I go, you guys uh, ever go to Gettysburg? And they go, no, never. Whoa. <laughs> no, they're joking. They're like, we go there all the time, man. I'm like, oh. all right. It's cool. <laughs> make a conversation. And I'm expecting them to give me tips or anything. They just make fun of me for thinking they'd never been to the Gettysburg. So... <laughs> So I'm like going in blind to Gettysburg. You're really hitting it off with them. I know they hate me. <laughs> so I'm literally trying to be friendly. <laughs> but I did do great on both shows. Yeah. And the guy said he'd be in touch. I don't know what that means, but uh the uh so we we go to I'm like making Ray go to Gettysburg. He doesn't he I think he's interested, but he doesn't know anything about the Civil War. I'm like explaining to him on the drive, I'm like it's between the North and South, slavery. <laughs> I'm like giving them a crash course on the Civil War. Sure, yeah. I'm like, this is the biggest battle because this decided the fate of the nation. Lee was defeated. He went back home, and then Lincoln got reelected. Yep. If Lee won Gettysburg, Lincoln might have lost reelection. Lee would have, they might have done a peace treaty. Whoever won, whoever took over Lincoln's place, there might be two countries right now. Right. North and South. Good thing there's not a divided country now. Right. Well, I mean, at least there's not. <laughs> there is a divided country now, but it could be like, you know, you could need your passport to get to Georgia. Yeah. Or something. And then there could I be. I do because I've lost my license. But... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. We need to update with that. Uh, we'll keep going. Well, just a quick update on that because uh, the day we recorded, we were also hanging out. I think we were hanging out with Joe List still, right? Because we went to the show together. Yeah. Yeah. And I look in your window, and I see you tossing your couch through your window. I see you tossing your couch like you're the FBI with a warrant. I'm looking at you like frantically go through your house. I, I, because uh, you live on the first floor. I'm, I'm like getting a people in your life. Yeah, I, I like look a, like, like a reality a, show. It's a museum, uh, uh, whatever they're called. Um, a museum, museum uh, exhibit. Uh, uh huh. But uh, yeah, I'm I still you. still can't find it. But uh, I got a new wallet. Oh yeah. So this is I go home for a funeral uh, last week, uh, and I I drove home for this funeral, and my dad goes, I see my parents, and I go, uh, yeah, it's been stressful. It was the day the episode came out, the uh -huh. last episode, and. Uh, uh, cause we were recording in advance. So I get there. My, my parents were concerned too. They called me. Wow. Like, Has he found it? I'm like, Nope. <laughs> but I saw him look So <laughs> through the window. Uh, so I, I get there. My dad goes, uh, so I want to give you your Christmas present. Mm. Uh, cause you didn't get to come home for Christmas. And I'm like, sounds great. I'm just excited to see you guys, even though it's bad circumstances. And he goes, 
I want you to know this was for Christmas. And I was like, okay. okay. He's like, remember, this was for Christmas. I'm like, okay. And I open it. And he goes, see, this is when I ordered it. And I'm like, okay. It's a wallet. <laughs> wow. When did he order it? In December. Weird. So it, I never it's got freaky. to get it in for Christmas. It came when I lost my, like, I get it when I have no wallet. It was the perfect timing. Wow. Well, I got a new wallet this weekend. Cause right, there was a, in, and I was going to give you the old one. <laughs> but you got a new one. Everybody, I've had more people reach out about this wallet than when I did late night. <laughs> Even Regan texted me. He goes, two wallets, 24 hours. Did he really text you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Everybody goes, you're setting a record. Every, <laughs> everybody knows about this wallet situation <laughs> joe won't stop bringing it up ron on ran into me on the street even though we live in the same building he's ron like on, two walls in right we had a ron in ron in hirschberg <laughs> sam evans everybody knows about this wallet thing oh yeah still no i still don't have my my one of my cards came in the mail finally <laughs> my debit card what have you been doing before then I had to bartering, do bartering with d fever, beaver, I, I, beaver oh, you first. Beat me. I was going to say pelts. You beat me to it. Well, I couldn't get it out. Fever pelts, I said. <laughs> fever <laughs> fever pellets. Keep going. But yeah, still no. Uh, I still haven't got my license in the mail, so I was driving to Hartford with a passport, which it does not count as a driver's license. Nope. <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> I'm just letting know what country to arrest me in. <laughs> Send the ticket to this address. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> Send, uh, alert my parents. Uh, do you know how fast you're going? I know I'm a citizen. Yeah. <laughs> I can legally fly, I think. <laughs> I could get in an airplane. Anyways, yeah. So I still don't have uh, all my stuff. Oh, my God, man. Well, I'm on the edge of my seat here. I, I, wouldn't that be funny? You get all your cards, you, then you find it. Uh, Did you check if any charge has been done? On, uh, well, my debit uh i canceled and i canceled my oh so you canceled everything no charges though you don't have to check right now jeez right so well you know it is just my uh financial situation i know uh, well you should have done it a week ago when you I lost did, the wallet i checked it while i lost my wallet and i, I was checking it and then I, before i left for uh san francisco uh for the wedding i canceled uh, everything oh cool all right well uh okay so back to the story real quick so we go to gettysburg Literally, you know, church satire people were no help. So I go in, and literally, this is funny. We go into the museum of Gettysburg, mm -hmm. and there's like a security guard, yeah, who's like decked out. He has like a gun, and he goes, "Excuse me, any weapons or uh, sharp objects?" And I say, "No," and he goes, "All right." <laughs> that was like the security there. There's no metal detector. Literally, this guy just asking. Like, all right, I don't feel safe at all now. Yeah, he's like, yeah, lightning won't strike here twice. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> There's been enough dead in this place. So uh, I go to the information booth, and there's an old guy there. I'm like, this is going to be good. I go, hey, man, uh, you know, what do I do? <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> he, gives me a, he gives me a map. Yeah. And he goes, uh, all right. Gettysburg, three-day battle, day one all the way up here. You got to get in your car, drive 10 minutes. Day three, all the way down there. You got Or day two, all the way down there. You got to drive another 30 minutes. And I'm like, oh, well, what about like Pickett's Charge and stuff? Oh, that's down down over there. Uh, you can walk there if you want. And then the guy, the guy, the old guy next to him goes, this guy wanted to do Pickett's Charge. And the other old guy goes, maybe. You want to do Pickett's Charge, son? And I go, uh, okay. He's like, well, Pickett's Charge, walk down here. You got to go down here. Walk to the Virginia statue and, and all this stuff. And I go, cool. He's like, do the charge, son. I'm like, all right. If you guys don't know, Pickett's Charge is where I'm from, Virginia, Army of Northern Virginia. Day one, they attacked uh, like the left flank, and that didn't work. Mm -hmm. Day two, they attacked the right flank. That didn't work. So Lee's big plan was to send like 12,000 Virginians up the north or up the middle because he thought that was going to be weakly defended. And it would have worked, except uh, the Union had all these <laughs> artillery things that just exploded these poor Southerners. Oh, my God. With shrapnel shells. So they're literally walking. This big field just exploded the whole time. Oh, my God. By the time they get to the middle, there's only like a few left. And then they just run away. And 
It's it's uh, but that one charge decided the fate of the war. So wow, like, oh cool, and North Carolina was in there too. I saw all these signs, but that's crazy. Yeah, so uh, I got to make sure there's no pickets charge on my account. There probably will be. <laughs> well, it probably uh, got trapped. Your, your account's been shrapneled. <laughs> And by poor Southerners, I don't mean uh, I support their cause. I'm just saying. If well, it's still if, their lives. Yeah, they're still their lives. And literally, like the gro- graphic description of these shrapnel shells are just like a thing. It lands. It's designed to just send as much metal around as possible. So, and uh, you know, there's no medicine back then. So literally, no. they're just di- dead. One shrapnel hits a piece of you. You're dead. My God. My God, man. So I'm like, <laughs> so we get there, and I'm like, okay, I'm looking at the map. The, literally, the, the old guys didn't really give me any kind of clue what to do. Just drive. <laughs> That's not even that. He's like, oh, you okay. can walk. So we, we parked at the visitor center. I'm walking. We walk through this path, and I and I see a statue of uh, that says Pennsylvania. And mm-hmm. I look on the map. I'm like, okay, this is the Pennsylvania statue. So that big statue over there must be the Virginia statue, and this must be Pickett's Charge. And uh, like from there to there is like this like fields and fences and some are like dilapidated and they're like the old like wooden fences where you you know you stack them like sticks because yeah. they don't have nails yeah so I'm like let's do it Ray you could care less so we're walking <laughs> through mud and like there's poop and all this like animal crap right I'm like mud you know stepping around all these weird that stinks po- yeah it's poop scoop. <laughs> All these plants I've never seen. I'm like, we're clearly climbing over fences, and I go, pick its charge. And we get all the way to the statue, and and I find out the statue we've been walking like two miles toward is uh, the Pennsylvania statue. Two more miles is the Virginia statue. We just trespassed on some <laughs> land. We weren't even doing it. We didn't do the charge at all. We're just getting, we're just disturbing like. <laughs> Some farmer's land. <laughs> You're like, uh, excuse me, sir. That's a corn silo. <laughs> yeah. They're like, they're like. I-, I wondered why there was like a laser pointer on my face the whole time. This farmer was upset. We we're trampling over his seeds. <laughs> so wow. We get to the Pennsylvania statue, and I'm, and he's like, oh, let's go home. I'm my shoes are soaked. <laughs> Uh, I have an extra pair of shoes. You put them on the mat. I know. Yeah, that's our, that's our gig. So I make him walk all the way to the Virginia statue, and I'm like, we're going to do it. We like literally do the same thing all over mud. He's complaining the whole time. And then I'm like, all right, so from the Virginia statue, that's Pickett's Charge probably. And I get there, and I see that you know, the path we just walked was Pickett's Charge. We had no idea. We just did it without even knowing it. Yeah. It was just completely useless. So then we <laughs> takes us like five hours. I'm like all exhausted, right. sunburned. This uh, <laughs> this plan really blew up. This plan. <laughs> yeah, I know. I sued for peace and Appomattox. <laughs> oh man! So then we have to do the show. I'm like exhausted. He's like has shoes that are all muddy. <laughs> he does. I have an extra pair. He's you know. Both shows have been so frazzled. First, I was frazzled from the yeah. four-hour drive. Second show, I've been tr- frazzled from the six-hour walk for no reason. And, uh, um, but it, both shows are still pretty good. But I forget what I was going with this. But also, there's a big pretzel factory there in uh, Snack Town, Han- Hanover. Yeah, there's Uts Hanover. So I go like second show. I go. My entire Colbert green room uh, was made from there. Yeah. <laughs> So the second show, I go, hey, who here works from home? Nobody. I'm like, you guys are pretzel people. You guys work at the factory. They don't say anything. I'm like, all right. You know, raise your salted hands, everybody. <laughs> raise your salted dough-filled hands if you work at the pretzel factory. No one does. They all just work construction. They, you know, I can't relate to these people at all. I bless their mad. I'm making fun of pretzels. <laughs> man, man, those pretzels were making you thirsty. <laughs> they did. Yeah, so was the walk. All right. I guess there's no end to that story about the Gettysburg, yeah. but let me. Okay, well, continue. <laughs> there's what? What's going I just took out my there? phone because oh. I took some notes here. Uh, what what are we at here? Uh, oh, well, okay. So we should wrap up soon. Yes. Uh, we got a Super Bowl party later today. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Hope everybody's uh, Super Bowl goes the way they wanted. We won't know because uh, it hasn't happened yet. Yep. Uh. 
Do we have any? We have an email. Oh yeah, let's read it. Uh, from everyone, panic attacking podcast at gmail .com. Uh, From might be slightly dear panic attackers. This year I quit, and this quit is in quotes. Coffee. Oh. I, I've been drinking it pretty much daily for a decade. I was having lots of emergency bathroom trips, number one and two, and thought coffee might be the culprit. It was. I'm not physically dependent on caffeine anymore, but emotionally I miss coffee so much. Once a week, I will experiment with coffee and get the same results. Over-caffeinated anxiety buzz for a half an hour, pee a million times, and 50-50 have another kind of emergency bathroom trip. Hmm. Why is it so hard to quit? Physically, I feel great without it. I sleep well. Energy levels are fine. Anxiety-wise, I feel great without it. No anxious thought spirals. Everything points to quitting because uh, the logical being the logical uh, choice. But once a week, I get that twinkle in my brain thinking this time things might be slightly different. Any advice? Warmest regards, MBS. He had his own pun and his own name. Things might be slightly different. You know, oh, did wow. Did you pick up on that? I didn't. Uh, well, what do you have to? What advice do you have for this man uh, or, or woman? I always think of... I don't know, uh, I don't know what gender he is. I always think of... Uh, or she is. <laughs> he, she, they. I always think of the... Uh, Larry David episode of Comedians in Cars where they're sitting there and Larry's drinking tea and it's Larry's argument is it's the same thing. There's something hot in my cup mm -hmm. and I'm sipping with you who's having coffee and this is the coffee experience. So I think switch to tea. Oh. I think tea has significantly low caffeine. There's some tea that has no caffeine. Maybe you just want that mug experience. I'm a big sucker for a mug. I love the mug ex atmosphere. I love it. So I think maybe try uh, a chamomile tea, which I think is no caffeine. And it's relaxing. It's relaxing. Yeah. And you'll get that steam. I love the steam coming from the mug. Yeah, you'll it's get hot. That whole thing. Yeah. And then subconsciously, it does kind of mentally wake you up because you, you have the memory of coffee. Yes. Uh, and the smell of and feel of steam on your face. And chamomile. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad you came, Emil. Uh, what, Thank you for chamomile. <laughs> what, what about you? Did you talk about the decaf at all? Decaf wasn't mentioned, but decaf has caffeine. Yeah, but it doesn't, it's barely there. Renan is a big decaf guy, and he says it does give him a little kick, but it's, yeah. it's not enough to mess him up. Uh, I uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I I remember one time I ordered calf, decaf in front of uh, Gary Goldman and Mike Kaplan, and both of them went, "Oh my God, you got decaf? That's worse for you than regular." And I'm like, "And I haven't touched it." Since. No, it's not. It's like specially washed to get all the caffeine mm -hmm. out of it. Fully so washed. You, yeah, fully washed Ethiopian. So yeah. then you got all the the caffeine out, but you get the flavor. I don't think it's that bad. I don't know what they're talking about, but yeah, you know. Uh, anyways, uh, Gary, we asked him to do it. He said no, or he, did, he, he, <laughs> he said didn't maybe. say no. He just said maybe, and then just ignored us. Well, he's the busiest man in showbiz. Is uh, he? All right. <laughs> okay, so uh, what we was going to say about that caffeine? Sometimes I'm like drinking caffeine, and then it just hits me all at once, and uh, literally, I'll get the same symptoms he had: clenched yeah. jaw, shakes. Um, and then I cut down on the caffeine. I feel like a zombie. Yeah. There's no winning here, everybody. Switch to tea. <laughs> we have one more topic here. Uh, my mind is always thinking about embarrassing and shameful moments, and I can't stop it. It makes me hate my life. Every single moment I'm not actively engaged in something mentally, such as playing a game, my mind just flashes embarrassing memories and things I regret, even if they're from years ago and it don't matter anymore. Same, man. Yeah. That's what's hard about sleeping is because yeah. you can't play a game and you can't read. I, you know, your eyes are closed. <laughs> it's just literally like a flashback theater of, of, of regret. Yeah. Uh, and then you're trying to uh, dissect them when you wake up and it doesn't do anything. Because it, you, it, you, there's no logical explanation. Yeah. Sometimes like if it's a real recent regret, it'll keep flashing and I'll have to do something to, to get over it. Yes. But further out regrets you just got to keep living life man and then like make happy memories that you can flash on yeah or like we said before and a million times write them down and and you know close it like the ecto cooler trap <laughs> <laughs> but that's all we can say everybody uh all right we got to wrap up yes any more announcements youtube 
subscribe and watch and uh, Patreon five bucks a month gets you four bonus episodes. We're recording another one this week, uh, two more and whatever. Yeah, uh, check out the Patreon. Check out the YouTube. Uh, anywhere you're gonna be coming up. The same thing from last episode. Uh, Omaha Funny Bone March 11th to 12th, and then um, Albany Funny Bone. That's gonna be great. I'm psyched. Uh, March 25th to 26th, everybody. I'll be in uh, Albany. That's great. Those are going to be fun. With, uh, with Emma Woman headlining. Those are going to be really fun shows. So look at look at Emma Woman on the website, and, that, and, that, and I'll be attached to that. Yes. Uh, February 19th, I'll be at Atlantic City Comedy Club with Joe List. Uh, we're going to watch a movie you haven't seen. Oh, uh, great. Together. I've seen them all. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, uh, February 22nd to the 27th, I'll be with Brian Regan uh, all over the West Coast. So oh my God! Yeah, so it's just super cool. It's a bunch of shows with Brian. Uh, so just, uh, I'm hoping he gets me a wallet while we're out and uh, <laughs> fills your wallet. <laughs> He's filling my wallet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you, uh, Brian. But uh, thanks, yeah. Brian. Thanks for being on two episodes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for chamomiling on. That didn't make sense. Anyways, that was uh, good. That was good. The twenty second to the twenty seventh. Uh, just check brianregan dot com and uh, all those shows. Uh, I'm I'm on. Awesome, everybody. Well, keep up and uh, keep <laughs> positive and keep up keeping on. <laughs> I never know how to end these. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye.